Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. My name is Anton, and today we're going to be taking a look at the R4 card that runs on the 3DS, DSi, DS Lite, and basically all the DS consoles. And I'm going to show you guys how to set them up, as well as my thoughts and opinions of the R4 card as well, and just some of my um, easy stuff that you can do to your R4 card experience to make it better. Anyway, let's get started. So we're going to be taking a look at the R4 card SDHC. The other R4 card, I did a video a while back about it, so I'll leave a link in the description so you guys can check that out. But we're mainly going to be focusing, of course, on this R4 card, which, as you can see here, is the box as well. And uh, I will leave a link in the description so you guys can check this one out as well, because it's definitely a great R4 card. And of course, it does have a power capacity of 32 gigabytes. that's what card I put in so I can load more ROMs on it. And of course, it does come with a USB-styled um, adapter so you can put a micro SD card, but I'd rather use one like this. It's a little bit easier since you can put in a USB as well as the card so you guys can use that together. So anyway, let's take a look at the software and how it works before I show you guys how to download it. So clicking on the icon as well, it'll be different game, random sometimes. I will display this menu here, where we can of course click on this media and this slot too as well, but we won't cover that because it's used with the Game Boy Advance um, slot. Uh, but we're going to check out media first, um, because I know some people like to do some stuff there. Um, but as you can see, here we can just listen to music, you can play videos, but I don't think people really want to do that. And of course we do have settings in here as well where you can change, um, can change the theme and stuff like that, download different ones. Um, I won't show you how, how to get them in this video, I might be doing a future video, but we're probably going to take a look at the game because that's probably the most important things and what you guys are here for. So as you can see here are all my games and stuff, I have to say this is not the best OS in the world. I'd rather have a different one. I, I don't know if they, we can get different ones, um, but the R4 one that it comes with, at least a moon shell, I don't find it to be the best, honestly. I, I feel like it shows each and every single file instead of the ones you want to show. I, I think there's some settings you can adjust as well, but as you can see, we're going to be playing Mario Kart um, Yes, and it works perfectly fine. It's just running on the same hardware. It's not emulation or anything, because why would they do that? So as you can see, it's running perfectly fine, and I even have all the characters here. You can do some save data as well, you can import your own. As you can see, going with Luigi here, uh, we can just play a regular match. And of course, you can also use cheats and stuff, using the internet actually does get and you can import your own as well, but uh, we can do some crazy stuff such as this. Or we can have a really fast speed of 300cc, and we can also be really tiny and have a flyability, and sometimes you'll even break the game like this. You can also play hacks and uh, other homebrew games as well, which is nice because they'll run perfectly fine. When you're playing on an emulator, they might not run as well just because it's not the actual hardware they were designed for. As you can see here is also Mario Craft. I did cover this in one of my recent videos as well, uh, but the link to the description as well so you can guys can check that out and a whole bunch of homebrew games. Um, but as you can see, this game runs perfectly fine because it, it's running on the hardware. But let's take a look at some emulators first. This is called um, NES DX. It's definitely a fantastic emulator and of course you can have different folders with different emulators inside that you guys uh, can put your ROMs in that way they're all organized. And of course it does take a while for the NES ROMs to load up since there are a lot of ROMs in that um, 
folder, but once we have them, all of them seem to work fine. I'm pretty much 100% all NES games will work using this emulator. I've not had any problems at all. I don't know if it depends for some certain games that maybe have a higher um, um, storage of that ROM, because some zipper ROM is bigger, then it might not have the best time running on a emulator. But from my experience, I have not had any problem with the NES emulator, and it works perfectly fine. As you can see, let's pick a game here, I think we're going to go with just a simple one, just to show you guys how, how it looks. It does squish the picture a bit when you're playing, and I mean, that's just because of the resolution. Uh, it shouldn't stretch it as well and fit it all, right? Um, because, yeah, I mean, it's not going to run exactly, um, but you can also, there's a whole bunch of settings so you guys can change how, the way you want it to look, but honestly, it does look fantastic like this. And I'm, I'm really glad that this emulator works perfectly fine, because with the D-pad, it's really, really, really nice. And of course, here are the settings here. You can do cheats, you can do, um, you can make different screens. So for example, say your top screen doesn't work. And I do have a DS like that. I might do a video um, taking the top screen part, and I could use it as an emulation uh, machine, just like that. And with the D-pad, it's perfect. Anyway, let's take a look at the next emulator, which is called Lame Boy Emulator, which you probably can guess is a Game Boy Emulator. So anyway, what we're going to do is go into our folder that says GB. I also have a GBC one, just so I can organize the ROMs as well to figure out which one I want to play, because some ROMs, like you have Link's Awakening DX, that's a Game Boy Color game, and you have Link's Awakening, the original for Game Boy. So, I do like to organize everything like that, and it just makes the load time of the ROMs faster. But anyway, let's take a look at a simple game such as Kirby's Dreamland. So let's take a look at it, click it here. And as you can see, it looks perfectly fine. Um, the emulation is pretty much just as perfect as the NES emulator, just because the Game Boy is probably you know, can run a lot better than an NES game, and the resolution does um, look a lot better, especially for games like Super Mario Land, none of the sprites are squished down just to make things look a bit better, um, just because of the resolution of the Game Boy, it's not very, you know, graphical system, let's just say that. And with the uh, um, settings as well, you can change a lot of stuff, say if you want a gray uh, instead of the green kind of palette, um, you can't really change color palettes, which kind of sucks. Uh, but you can do it full screen, you can do it the proper resolution it's meant to be in as well. So there's a whole bunch of customization options if you guys want to try and figure some of those out. Game Boy Color games as well look fantastic and run perfectly fine. They probably have 100% uh, guarantee that they'll run perfectly fine, and I've had no problems with this, they're fantastic. Anyway, let's take a look at SNEMU for DS. So of course, this is the Super Nintendo emulator. Now of course, the, I have all my ROMs here as well, and this emulator isn't perfect. I mean, Super Nintendo is a bit of a bigger um, console for the DS to run. I'm surprised it even runs at all, to be honest with you. Um, but it depends on the ROM, you kind of have to try some of them out. For example, if we were to play Super Mario All-Stars, it runs perfectly fine. You can adjust the speed, so if a game is a little bit faster, that might just be because, you know, this is the speed of the emulator and it's running a little bit faster. But playing a game like Super Mario All-Stars, it does run slightly faster, so luckily you can change, um, the speed as well. There are as much customization options, it's mainly just stuff to fix the graphics in case they're broken. Um, but you just have to try with the game. Some games like F-Zero might look perfectly fine, but in the background they might not look that good. Um, Super Mario Kart, for example, doesn't run at all, and it just saves the Nintendo logo. So, obviously that's a problem, and that game doesn't run at all. Um, I don't know if there's ways to fix this, but overall, I just think it just depends on the ROM. Anyway, now I'm going to show you guys how to download it. So what you're going to do is go down to the description and there will be a link that shows you everything 
and uh, just, you know, I have included a whole bunch of different folders, like, I've included Genesis as well, with an emulator, so you guys can try that out as well. I didn't include this video, but definitely try that out, there's also a master system in here as well, somewhere. Uh, but yeah, there's a whole bunch of different emulators for you guys to try out as well. Um, sadly, I didn't put any homebrew or anything like that, but yeah, well, the, the entire emulation and the OS is here too. If you just want the emulators, you can grab them here too, and you don't want the actual um, R4 um, OS, then you can just get them, and you can just drag your ROMs inside each folder when you want to set it up, but of course, everything is just there for you guys to do this. So anyway, to download it, you're just going to go all the way down to the download button. Um, it might just say download everything as well, and it will zip it as a folder as well, and you're just going to unzip it, and I'll show you right here. So just come up with something like this. Just going to unzip it using the structure that you have. And then of course you'll get a folder that looks something like this. But of course you don't want to just drag and drop it into your uh, micro SD card. You want to take everything first and just just select everything. Control A will help you bring up that option of just uh, selecting everything and you guys are just going to put it into the root of the um, R4 card as you can see here. We put it in there and just get rid of these And of course, that is pretty much it, and it should run perfectly fine. Anyway guys, thank you for watching this video of how to turn your DS console or your 3DS into a uh, retro machine basically that can run almost any game, and basically that would make it able to run everything into a virtual console, which would eliminate the need for that, especially. And it just shows that the Super Nintendo games can be played on older hardware other than the new Nintendo 3DS XL. As of course, I'm using the Nintendo, just the re original Nintendo 3DS XL. And of course, make sure to leave a like, a subscribe as well for the kind of channel. And of course, comment if you have any questions regarding the R4 card uh, setup. And uh, of course, I will be happy to help you guys out. And as always, I will see you guys next time. Goodbye. Thank you.